Hi there, finally back from my vacation, and I'm back with some more books that I've finished along the way. I finished a bunch of things over that vacation, which I'm really excited to bring that content out real soon. If you're excited for more book talks, if you wanna see some content surrounding manga, if you wanna see some more Cosmere stuff that's gonna be coming up real soon, maybe some graphic novels that I picked up recently, hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. I try to post at least a video a week when I'm not overwhelmed by everything else in life. And I'm, I'm just trying to spread that storytelling positivity. This week, I'm coming at you with a book called The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. This book centers around a government agent named Linus, who is a part of the DICOMY, which is the department in charge of magical youth. The magical youth they're in charge of range from gnomes to wood sprites to wyverns. After so many years of work as an inspector for these orphanages where he'll go in, he'll see if everything's following the rules and regulations, and then he'll be giving his recommendation of whether this orphanage should stay open or close. He's been given a task to go to a a highly classified orphanage to see if it's up to snuff. I have a lot of mixed feelings about this book. I think while I was reading it, I had a really good time. I think Clune's prose is extremely fun to read. It's kind of a toned down version of uh, something akin to Douglas Adams or Lemony Snicket. It has that, that rhythm to it that those similar narrators do. We immediately see that Clune has a pretty masterful grasp of tone control in his story, where the early few chapters are very much this dull, gray, corporateness that might feel familiar from other stories. As soon as he gets to the Cerulean Sea, there's an immediate tone shift and the whole entire book kind of brightens up. You can really see just how masterful Clune's control of tone is through that transition. His characters as well, Linus, the kids at the orphanage, the head of the orphanage, Arthur Parnassus, they all feel extremely distinct and fleshed out. The children feel real and genuine in the way that they act with only a couple of those weird tropey moments of them knowing and being wise beyond their years. For the most part, they're just kids being kids and some of those reactions that are significantly more truthful and hit the main character in meaningful ways feel natural and genuine coming from these kids. And it's it's cute to see him do warm and fuzzy things. I don't know. And it's following as Linus kind of grows to become way more attached to these characters. And because they're so real, it feels like a good relationship that he's building. The plot itself is, um, well, it's not necessarily weak. The plot does what it has to do. This is a found family kind of story. It's going to hit those found family plot beats. You got those heartwarming moments. You get those important scenes of character realization from Linus. But the story feels a bit too stuck in its roots as a found family story. It feels a bit tropey in its plot. A lot of the things that happen in this story aren't driven by the characters that we're following. Not a lot happens. You're just kind of following them in their day to day. You're living with Linus as he lives with these orphans and gets to understand what's going on at this orphanage. That's not necessarily a negative thing. If you're not in it for the plot, if you just want to read about these characters and see the situations that they go through, this is a really good read for you. If you want something that's significant more plot driven then this might be a bit boring for you as it meanders around and it gets to the points that it needs to but it's it's looking at everything on the way to getting there now this is where i feel that the story starts to be more of a mixed bag for two reasons that fall under i guess the umbrella term of world building the first issue i have with it is there isn't a lot of world building there are five total settings in this world that we get to see that's it that's the whole world that's all we hear about that's all we know about. No other places get mentioned beyond these. We don't even really know what era or time that this world is in other than contemporary. And the world feels a bit hollow for this. There are no conversations that focus on outward things. It's all focused inward. It's all focused on the town. It's all focused on the kids. It's all focused on the D-I-C-O-M-Y. There's nary a hint of anything beyond the borders of the page. And that's a big letdown. I feel like the world could have been built out significantly more here. It feels like there's a lot of interesting content to go with that, but it just didn't happen. This obviously wasn't a story that wanted to focus on the greater world, but I think there could have been some more mentions of it. I think an author can pretend like they had a lot more world building than they actually do, it can really trick the reader into believing there's a way more fleshed out world behind what we actually get to see. And that doesn't happen here. The second weakness of this world building is the actual infrastructure of this government system that Linus is a part of and the history that it has with these magical races in general, let alone the magical youth. We don't know a whole bunch about the functioning of this system. It's very clear that it's meant to be an analog for systems in the real world. 
systems that have stolen kids from families, killed kids, specifically non-white kids, indigenous kids. We are still learning about modern occurrences of at worst evil, at best gross negligence that has occurred under the purview of progressive governments. In this world, we don't really know anything other than what Linus gives us. We don't know when this all started. Similarly to Linus, we don't know what happens to the kids after he sends a report that would close an orphanage. We don't really know what these schools are that are referenced often and what the difference is between an orphanage and a school. Though if it's anything like the real world, it's probably a lot of brainwashing and removing any kind of cultural. We don't even know what happens when they grow up and they leave the care of the DICOMY. We do see that there is animosity between humans and these children throughout the book. You do grow attached to these characters. There's a clear comparison to racial hate happening here. And we are thankfully shown that a good solution to that is proximity to other cultures, other races, and that can reduce ignorance towards them, reduce fear towards them, reduce the othering of these other races and of these other people. And those are all really good things to learn and really good things to tell people because increasing everyone's tolerance of other races is an important message to get across. But it just doesn't feel like enough here. Drawing this one-to-one -one comparison to the countries in the world today that are mistreating groups of people requires a bit more forethought, requires a bit more thinking through, especially when you give an ending that we get here that doesn't feel like we actually address the core problem. And that's probably my biggest issue with this book. By the end of it, the core issue is still there. Yeah, you know, Linus goes through his story arc, the kids go through their story arcs, the ending was probably the weakest part here that felt like it missed the landing. Ultimately, I enjoyed this story in a vacuum. It's fun to read. I think you can read this book critically and you can walk away with a really good LGBT representation story, some good themes about self-acceptance and about the acceptance of people different from yourself, but also walk away knowing that <laughs> the way that they solve the problem in this book is just not how we're going to solve our contemporary issues in, in today's society. This is a hopeful piece and sometimes reading something that's hopeful can be good. I mean, like I said in a previous video, <laughs> I like cop media, but it's because I look at it through a lens of it being hopeful of what cops could be and not the way that cops are. But I do totally acknowledge that that's coming from a place of privilege already where I don't experience that kind of violence. But there's a lot going on in that core issue of this book. And so I want to release a video later that's looking at that specifically. It didn't feel right to have a general review of this book and then dive into talking about that in my spoiler section. I wanted to give that its own space and its own focus. And I wanna spend more time covering that topic than I normally would even in a deep dive portion of a video. So with that, I'm gonna give this book like three buttons out of five buttons. It's a lighthearted read that I think at times is a bit too naive with the comparisons that it's drawing. I also certainly think that we could have gone without as, as many jokes about Linus's weight that we got in this book, but I, I digress. This book is about like 115,000 words, it's a smidge longer than The Golden Compass, like a morsel shorter than The Return of the King, but it reads fairly quick with the rhythm that Clune is able to keep throughout the book in his prose. Check it out. Tell me what you think. I want to hear what you got to say if you read this book. So hop down in those comments and let me know. If you like anything that I had to say today, hit that like button. And if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll catch you in the next one. And until then, stay lit.